Hi, I'm Gary from LawnAeration.com. Today I'm going to show you uh, the basics of running a uh, stand-up. Uh, this is an Xmark lawn aerator. Uh, so I'm going to show you the basics of how to run that and, um, and a couple techniques. I uh, won't we'll spend a lot of time on this. It's, uh, it's a pretty fun machine to ride. It does a great job. Um, you know, you can see some of my other videos about maintenance on these machines, uh, pros and cons on the machines, how to repair some things on the machines. Today I'm just going to show you how to run the machine uh, for someone that's maybe a beginner on the machine. Uh, first off, uh, the machine's pretty simple. If you've been on zero turn mowers uh, or things like that or stand on mowers, it's real simple. Obviously you have your zero turn controls. If you never run a zero turn mower or something like this, this is probably not the best machine to start on. Um, running a lawn aerator is, uh, it takes a lot more um, uh, observance when you're running it than a mower does because there's items in the ground that you can hit uh, more easily than a mower. With the mower, you have to be concerned with things that are sticking up out of the ground. With a lawn aerator, you know, you have water covers, you have sprinkler heads, um, you have valve covers, you have rocks, concrete, roots, any number of things can be in the ground. Uh, so you really have to be watching, paying attention when you run an aerator, uh, even more so than running a zero turn mower. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at the controls. Uh, really simple, like most mowers. Um, you know, your choke, this is your choke, this is your throttle. Uh, when you run this machine, you're going to run it with uh, your throttle all the way up, all the time. Um, generally, if you run it halfway down, you're just going to bog the machine down. So you always want to run throttle all the way up all the time. Um, this button right here on these newer X marks, uh, this is a pretty new machine. It's only got 42 hours on it. Um, and on these X marks, this is an override button for the time control. Now the time control is down here, and when you push on that with your toe, it'll put the tines in the ground. Um, so this will lower the tines and letting up will raise the tines. Most of the time when I'm running it, um, I'll just keep my toe here and I lift my toe up and down like this. In general, when you're running this machine, you do not want to back up with the tines in the ground. Uh, so that's the tine actuator. This switch right here is an override. If this switch is down, it would not let the button actuate so you don't accidentally step on it. Uh, that would definitely be for a beginner. I prefer to keep it up. Uh, all the time. The older Xmark machines don't have this button. It's always on. This knob right here would change the pressure. Uh, the tines are controlled uh, with hydraulic downforce. Uh, so it'll control the pressure. Um, and the more you turn this to the right, the higher the pressure will go. Now, I always tell my guys, you know, try to get about a, a two, two and a half inch plug. Um, don't, you know, you're not always trying to get a plug that's four inches long. Uh, because you you know you might get into cable lines that deep uh, you could tear the grass so generally you'll adjust this sometimes if it's hard or soft conditions um, you'll adjust this but I use as little force as possible to get about a two between a two and a three inch plug when I'm aerating um, it's less stress on the meat machine and it's safer on the turf you don't have to worry about uh, tearing things up so much Generally, I find with this machine, um, I run it usually between about 200 and 300 pounds. Um, most of the time, if it's soft, I'll run it at 200 or maybe 180 even. Now, if you don't run it at least close to 200, um, the hydraulic system isn't pressurized enough to raise the tines up out of the ground. Uh, so what you'll find is that when you turn on the machine, uh, the tines will still be down in the ground. They won't raise up fully and you'll tear some grass. Uh, so you have to run this at least about 180, uh, about 180 pounds. Um, generally, I start at 200 and I go up from there. Um, that's generally how we do it. As far as pattern goes, when I'm running the machine, um, come around the front, you can see the tines are inset from the wheels. So basically the tines are right between the rear wheels. So your tine width is about like this on the machine. Uh, so when you're running it, you can gauge that by your, your front two caster wheels. Sometimes if you're on the edge of a sidewalk, if you want to be really close to the edge of a sidewalk, you'll have to run your back wheel on this sidewalk because your front caster is in farther. So you'll run your back wheel on the 
sidewalk, that way your tines are right here. You want to, as you're running the machine, you want to keep an eye on things like these water covers. They'll creep up on you quick. If you're not quite sure, you know, if you're running the machine and you see a void in the grass like that, I'm always cautious because it might be an obstacle. Uh, sometimes it is, and sometimes, like here, it's just a bare part, patch of grass. A lot of times that might be a sewer cover. Um, so as you're running up on there, you have to be very cautious about that. Uh, now, as you're running the machine, as far as pattern, Generally, you'll want to go in a straight line. These machines, um, they're zero turn machines, but you cannot run, uh, you cannot do a zero turn with the tines in the ground. So anytime that you're going to do a sharp turn or a very tight turn where you're turning around the machine, uh, you'll want to make sure that you take the tines out of the ground to do that. Um, so you want to lift up on the button. For instance, um, you can, a lot of times, uh, the machine will navigate around this tree in about a three foot radius, but I do not recommend that. Uh, the tightest radius I recommend running an Xmark machine in is about a six to eight foot circle, somewhere around there, which will be about twice this big. Uh, anything smaller than that, like this tree, you would not want to try to circle it with the tines in the ground. Rather, what you would want to do would be come up to the tree, go around it much like you would with a mower about this far and if you're in a tight spot you might want to come here and back up to the tree and then continue on forward uh, you do not want to try to circle um, it'll it'll uh, want to put a lot of um, horizontal um, tension on the tines uh, it will also um, tear the ground up when you do that so generally you want to run as much straight lines as possible um, slow sweeping curves are okay, uh, but nothing too sharp without letting the tines up off the ground. Then lastly, after you do the bulk of your area, you'll want to leave the perimeter swath until absolute last. So, uh, as you go back and forth and turn the machine, you'll find there will be about three or four foot right here that does not get aerated because of how you stop the machine. You'll see that in a minute when I run the machine. So after you go back and forth to do the vast majority of the property, um, when you're finished, then you'll want to come up and do one or two swaths along the edge lastly. Uh, there's a couple reasons we wait and do that last. Um, the main reason I wait to do that last is because when you run the machine, obviously plugs are coming out of the ground. If it's wet at all, those plugs are going to stick to your tires. They're going to get a muddy situation. They're all going to get trampled down. and. Uh, you're just going to get uh, to a point where um, that this end gets really tracked up. So if you leave this until last, uh, you'll find that it'll keep your tires cleaner. It won't track up the yard as bad. Um, and that's just recommended to do. Um, so let's take a look uh, how I run the machine. And you can uh, take a look at the techniques I've talked about. Start it up. About. We're going to get ready to go. Choke. Throttle about half.
things I thought about as I'm running the machine I should mention to you. Uh, when you go to make your turns, uh, the tines are not instantaneous. It takes about a full second to maybe a second and a half to raise or lower the tines into the ground. Um, so a lot of times as you come to the stop, you have to give a brief hesitation uh, before you make your turn or you will tear the turf. Uh, alternatively, uh, as you come up to your stopping point, like this curb, um, you can raise the tines out of the ground before you make your complete stop. That way when you're ready to make your turn, the tines are already out of the ground. You can make your turn as you take off. Um, normally, just as I'm getting almost all the way all around on my turn, then I'm laying into the pedal to put the tines in the ground. That way the tines are in the ground when I start to face forward. I don't have to actually sit there and pause. It might seem like I'm coming to the turn quickly, turning and going out without a pause, but I'm actually raising the tines before I get to the turn, just slightly, and then pushing the tines back into the ground right before I leave the turn. That way I'm not taking extra time uh, at the corners when I make my turn. basics of running an Xmark uh, lawn aerator. Uh, a couple of my videos in the future, I'm going to show you some advanced techniques uh, about, you know, uh, using it on slopes, up and down slopes, or off camber slopes. Um, we'll talk about body position uh, running it, but here we're just talking about pattern and the basics of running it. Uh, you'll notice that when we're done, uh, we get a pretty thoroughly aerated uh, view, so you can see that it did a pretty good job. There's a lot of plugs. They're reasonable size. Uh, I had that set at about 200 to 225, and I've got about a two and a half inch plug here. So hopefully that video has helped you if you've never ran one of the mach machines before, and you're looking for uh, the basic operation and a couple little tips. Thanks for watching.